be with all of you tonight. It's been a very wonderful week for me thus far. And we welcome our members of our fellowship on live stream. What a blessing that is. Tonight we're continuing in the Gospel of John. This will be our 59th exposition of this book. We're going to be in verses 10 through 14 of John 5. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, <clears throat> It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Amen. Now when the Lord works, of course this, the word of the Lord tells us, His works are done in truth. <clears throat> and Moses said his works are perfect, They're flawless. And furthermore, the psalmist said his tender mercies are over all his works. So the works of God, they, uh, they're wonderful, and yet there are some people who can't receive them. That's because... Uh, even though it may appear foolish at first, what the Lord does sometimes contradicts what people think are right or wrong. They don't blend in with the uh, wisdom of the world. That's right. The religious world. Yes. Well, that's the only world that pays any attention, that make, makes any pretense to, yeah. right, mm -hmm. to listen to Jesus. Now, this man in our text, he'd been lame for 38 years. Obviously, he must have been recognized by some people, and he was seen carrying the pallet on which he'd been laying for 38 years. And he's not going to hesitate to tell why he's doing this, why he's walking. It's a simplistic answer, but he said what he could. And we're going to find in this that the works of God are designed to make known something about God himself and also to reveal the hearts of men. It, it, they do both things. If Jesus never did anything, there's a lot we'd never know about scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. <laughs> if he never did anything, never said anything, there's a lot we would never have known. But the works and uh, presence and works of Jesus not only reveal who God is, they reveal what man is by nature. Now it is possible for the works to be so flawless that even the world sees that there, there's nothing wrong with them. It's possible. Therefore we read of the early church they were praising God and having favor with all the people. See, that's, nobody could deny <laughs> something's happened here to this community of people, and it was not something that was damaging to society, so to speak. And then in that context, the Lord added daily to them such as should be saved. See, so there it was, the people, there hadn't been time for corruption to creep in. The first corruption that creeped in was Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira. Up yeah. until that time, the corrupt, no corruption had crept in so that you were seeing the raw result of the work of Christ. You, you, see, you were seeing what happens to people when they're converted. There's a lot of people that maybe have never seen what happens to people when they're really converted. They, they just haven't been, 
Maybe it's been before them, but they didn't, it not been taught properly. This also accounts for the rapid spreading of the truth. The, the people, the people weren't, against, weren't against them at first. So when the people aren't against the people of God, the growth ex explodes. Yeah. All right. In the United States, we have experienced a relative peace for many years. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't resulted in anything like this. Yeah. It hasn't resulted in anything like this. Why not? Because there's more disgenuine mm -hmm. or ungenuine yeah, right. Christians than there are real ones. So it's, it's, God just doesn't work significantly in that kind of environment. That's the way it is. Now the works of God awakened opposition right off the right off the bat, so to speak, among the religious dignitaries, they, the priests, you know, and so forth. It awakened some opposition right away, but the opposition couldn't spread a lot because there was too much. The people loved Jesus and wanted him around too much. Now, the works of God which are brought to an uh, apex in Christ, are not meant to be assessed. They're meant to be believed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, this may seem like it's a, a rather simplistic observation, but it's not. It's a very profound observation. They're not intended to be assessed or examined mm -hmm. or proved yeah, or right. tested. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, if you don't believe me, believe the works. Yeah. Uh -huh. Believe the works, they testify of me. Yeah. So we're going to review uh, some of the, one of his great works here in this text. Really the, um, the Jews there, the early church had a populace that was, that, that had a knowledge of scripture. That's right, exactly right. They, they, and so, that they were much easier, if I could say that, to um, convert than Americans. Even though we've had peace, we've had a people that were Bible ignorant. That's right. They 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 weren't able to process what what is a God and what is a you know it, what is salvation. They 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 so as a result, they they weren't converted. Even though the opportunity like was there. Yes. They weren't converted. Yeah, and you, know, you see. Here's where, here's where the Christians as a body fell behind the Jews as a body. With all of their faults and failures, the Jews taught their children. Yeah, that's right. Without fail, they taught their children. And when they grew up, see, they're ready to receive the Savior. Yes, yes, but this is not what's happening in the church today. Anyone that says it is just simply does not know what they're talking about. The children are not being taught. Yeah. I know of no youth ministry that's yeah. doing it either. Yeah. You're not being taught. So consequently, when they become of adult age, they're not ready yeah. to receive Christ. God said of Abraham, I know him. He'll command his children after him. I, I know him. I know him. What's he going to do? He's going to command his children after him. And uh, he did. And Isaac knew about it. Jacob knew yeah. about it. The 12 tribes knew about it. And all the way down the line, the people were taught. Mm -hmm. Yes, many of them didn't accept it. I understand that. But when their eyes were opened, yeah. see, when the eyes were opened, like on the day of Pentecost, they saw it. Mm -hmm. But you can open the eyes of the average American, and he still wouldn't see anything. Even with eyes open, mm -hmm. he still wouldn't see anything because they have, they have not been built right. uh, properly. Well, let's look at this. The Jews said unto him, it was cured, hey, it's the Sabbath day. And you shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be carrying that bed. <clears throat> Now, you must never forget that Jesus was born in and ministered in a Jewish society. One time he went up to the borders of Tyre and Sidon, way up north. That was still in the Promised Land. That was in the section of the land given to Asher. There's no evidence that Jesus ever did go outside the Promised Land. Mm 
and, pre and preach and teach. He got to the got to the border of it, but he never went. He never went outside. When he went to Tyre and Sidon, he preferred when he got there. The scripture says he preferred not to be known. He, but he couldn't be hid. <laughs> he, where the genuine Jesus is, he can't be. He can't be hid. He can't be. So if you if if a Christ can be hidden, it's just not the real Christ. That's that's all. It's just that simple. But he couldn't be hidden, and that was uh, when his entire inside, and that's where he met that Syrophoenician woman. You remember that? Asked him to heal her daughter, and he did. Yeah. The point to be seen is that although Jesus is the Savior of the world, as stated in John 4:42, he is the, he is emphatically the Savior of the world. But his first appearances were to the Jews. When it comes to the gospel, it's the power of God and the salvation to the Jew first, yeah. first. Amen. also to the Gentiles. And John said he came unto his own as the Jews, and his own received him not. So that first, this was like a, a, a righteous point with God that this happened. Amen. When it comes to the gospel, it's to the Jew first. When it comes to the punishment of evil, Romans 2 9 says it's to the Jew first. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to the glory, honor, and immortality to those who do good, it's to the Jew first, Romans 2 10 says. When Paul and Barnabas preached at the synagogue in Antioch of Pisidia, they weren't received too well, to say the least. But Paul said it was necessary. Yeah. That the word of God should first have been spoken to you. That yeah. was necessary. Jesus told his disciples that he preached, preached beginning at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. then Samaria, then the uttermost part of the earth. He said to start with the Jews because that's, that's, where, that's who received the promise. Later Paul said to the, some Jews, Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you feareth God to you, is the word of this salvation sent? See? Amen. Sent to the Jews. Acts 3.26, Peter said, Unto you first, unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquity. See, this is where God had invested That's right. Amen. all of his labors, mm -hmm. excluding the work in the conscience and this excluding that sort of thing. And so Jesus uh, ministered to them, f to them first. So this, what this confirms to us is that the Jesus that was preached is the Jesus the prophets foretold. Amen. Yes, amen. That's that's the one it is. Yes. He men have invented another Jesus. Yeah. That's right. There's really not a whole lot of people in the Christian world, percentage-wise that have heard the real Jesus proclaimed. It's just, if you've been around a while, you know this. This is no, no good news to you, but that's the way it is. This is very relevant because, see, there's another Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, the Corinthians had heard of another Jesus. Who, is, who exactly is another Jesus? It's a Jesus that wasn't foretold. That's the Jesus it is. And there's a Jesus being preached today. Yes. And it's accelerated in the last three or four decades. There's a Jesus being preached mm -hmm. that, that was not foretold. Yes. A Jesus that wasn't foretold. That's right. That Jesus was foretold that he would take away your sin That's right. and deliver you from sin. That's right. So if you teach a Jesus that says, I just love you just the way you are, it's another Jesus. It's another one. See, he, he taught a Jesus that would give a new heart. Yes. And the people would the people would be recreated uh -huh. and changed. Amen. That's the Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they said to this man, they said, um, "It's the Sabbath day today, and you it's unlawful for you to carry that bed." Now here's what the Sabbath, the commandment concerning the Sabbath day. Here's what here's what it said. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. 
Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor the maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. In Exodus 23, 12, says, Six days shalt thou do, quote, thy work. Uh -huh. Now, there were activities that were excluded from this. For instance, a priest did a lot of labor on the Sabbath day. Yeah, that's right. that, that was excluded. That wasn't included in that uh -huh. uh, forbidding to work. He is also taught that if you had to haul an ox out that had fallen into a pit, that, that was excluded. That yeah. wasn't considered work. And uh, circumcision on the Sabbath day wasn't considered uh -huh. work. So it wasn't at all activity, see. So was, this was the work he was referring to was productive work that had to do with sustaining life. Uh -huh. yes. It was that kind of work. Uh -huh. Like on that when uh, God gave manna to the children of Israel, they had to gather it to live, yeah. you know. Yeah. But on the Sabbath day, they could, couldn't gather any. Right. And a double portion was given to them the day before, uh -huh. see. So it was like this, that kind of work, work that is necessary to sustain life. Mm -hmm. He said, you don't do that on my day. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's still, to this day, there's still arguments about whether you should work, you know, on the Sabbath Sunday. But it is something people have to work out. Because yeah. yeah. God did say that. Yeah. You ordain a Sabbath day before the law. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's something. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's something to take think about. You can't dictate it because right. that's that's what these people are trying to do. See, they're trying to dictate it according to their own uh, own own interpretation. Mm -hmm. Now, what the Pharisees did, the Pharisees took what they thought the commandment meant, mm -hmm. and they married it with the commandment. They took their interpretation and they, yes. they glued it onto the commandment so that when you heard the commandment, you couldn't hear the commandment without hearing their interpretation uh -huh. of the commandment. And perhaps you've been subjected to this sort of thing I, I have myself. But they were wrong in doing this. When they said it's not lawful, their, their assessment was, uh -huh. was wrong. They even thought it was wrong to take ears of grain standing wheat and eat them. They thought that was breaking the Sabbath day too. And one time they watched Jesus to see if he'd heal a man on the Sabbath day and that was, they thought healing a man on the Sabbath day, that, that violated the, yeah. the commandment. One time Jesus healed a man of dropsy, that where a drop where a body has an accumulation, excess of accumulation of water. And they, they said he, that was breaking the Sabbath day. The point to see here is that religious tradition is mesmerizing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Like hypnotizes, mm -hmm. like hypnotizes people. Mm -hmm. I was caught in the hypnosis of some of it myself. Mm -hmm. it, it, it hypnotizes the person. That's what mesmerized means. It's all you're so occupied with it, you can't see the truth for this yeah. Yeah. mass of confusion you're looking at. And you, the Jews taught us that, see? Yeah. We shouldn't have to learn this yeah. again. The Jews that are an exhibit of this type of thing happening, the yeah. Pharisees and Sadducees and all of them, they are an exhibit of what this, what it does when you take, when you put your eyes on tradition, pretty soon you equate it hmm. with scripture. Yes. Well, they charged the man and the, I, I rejoice in his naivete. <laughs> mm -hmm. He just said, well, the man that healed me told me to do this. He yeah. told me to pick up my bed and walk. That was enough for him. Yeah. That was enough for him. Take up that bed and walk. He didn't need any further authorization. Thought never occurred to him that this might break the Sabbath day, that he that this miracle was performed in violation of the Sabbath day. Never he never thought occurred to him. Now see the acid test of a disciple of Christ is this. Does he do what Jesus said? Yeah, See, that's, that's the acid, that's the acid yeah. test. That's right. Now, if the winds and waves obey Jesus, what do you do with the person who doesn't? Huh? If demons obey Jesus, yeah. what is our view of a person that doesn't obey Jesus? See, this is ser serious business. We are told the Holy Spirit is given by God to them that obey him. That's Acts 5.32. Yeah. 
And Jesus is called the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. That's Hebrews 5, 9. So see, this is an example of a man obeying Jesus. I don't know if he personally had thought about it being the Sabbath day or not, but it didn't, it didn't cause him to swerve at all when these men said, it's not lawful. He, did, he didn't say, well, I better not do this. See? Yes, Brother Judah. That was something like this. He said, He that made me whole, that that's the one who told me, take yeah. up your bed and yeah. walk. That's right. So if he had power enough to make me whole after yeah. that many years, yeah. and he tells me to pick up my bed and walk, yeah. am I going to disobey that? Yeah. I, I can see that sort of like incre incredulous mindset. If he can do this, I'm most definitely going to listen to what he says. Yeah. How could a man have authority like that and yeah. break God's law? Yeah, see? Right. Yeah. How is this possible? So they couldn't contain him, so they asked him. They asked him, what man is that? that said, what, 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 who said that? What man is it? Who's this fellow, one version says? Living Bible says, oh, who said such a thing as that? See, it's, they were surprised because it contradicted. Remember what I said at the beginning? A lot of times what Jesus does contradicts what men think is right uh -huh. yeah. or wrong. Of course, this is one of the marks of sectarianism, mm -hmm. is one of its marks. The emphasis, and this is invariably, wherever there's sectarianism, what I'm going to say here is absolutely present. Mm -hmm. Wherever there's sectarianism, there is, a, there is no emphasis on divine causes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They never emphasize this. Mm -hmm. When I say never, I do mean never. They never emphasize divine causes causes. Mm -hmm. They don't even deal with causes, right. see? But here we're dealing with causes, something that Jesus caused. Yeah. Wherever Christianity is institutionalized, the institution upstages the Christianity. Yeah, that's right. I don't care where it is. There's different cupboards of the world. See, in Germany, there's the Lutherans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Italy was the Catholics. Mm -hmm. And so forth. There's different different areas. There are different sects, mm -hmm. and divisions arose. But when they did, they upstaged yeah. Christ in the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Some of us lived with that for a long time. Some of the sects in Israel were the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the chief priests. They were clusters of people that kind of had their own ideas, mm -hmm. but eventually they clashed with what God said. Now the scripture says that this man, he didn't know who it was. He said he wished not who it was. He, he, did, <laughs> he didn't know who healed him. Didn't know who it was. One version says, the NIV says he had no idea who, who he was. He had no knowledge of him. The same kind of response was found in a blind man Jesus healed one yeah. time. Jesus found him and he said, "Do you believe in the Son of God?" He says, "Who is he?" He said, "I'll do. Who is he?" And I'll believe on him. He didn't know. He didn't know who the Son of God was. Jesus said to him, "Thou hast both seen him, and it's he that talketh with thee." And the blind man said, "Lord, I believe." <laughs> now I, I've noticed that this is true of every uh, maturing believer. Eventually, Jesus is seen as bigger than they thought. Yeah, amen. Happens to everybody. Doesn't make a difference to who it is. Mm -hmm. As you grow into Christ, it's like there's something you didn't know about Jesus that you'll see, and He ends up He's bigger than you thought. Uh -huh. yeah. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. The view is broadened, and every time it's broadened, it doesn't erase what you knew before mm -hmm. that was real. When it broadens, it's always harmonious with legitimate knowledge of them before. It's a day star dawning. See, that's what a day dawns and a day star rises in your heart. That's what he's, what he's talking about. None of the additional, additional insight contradicts legitimate earlier insight. It always uh, harmonizes. 
And if you've been, uh, been exposed to false teaching, some of it was legitimate that you heard. You heard some things they were legitimate. You, you, can't dis, you can't discard. You can never discard what you knew that was legitimate. You have to, you have to maintain that and seek for that to grow. But see, if, a per, if everybody did that, sectarianism would collapse. <laughs> It would, it would collapse, because the thing that distinguishes sectarianism isn't it isn't holiness yeah, that's right. yeah. or Bible knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's the sectarian view. That's yeah. what causes that thing to stand. Amen. So the Jesus, in a sense, he he is to personalities like what the ocean is to the world. The largest mass of water in the world is the Pacific Ocean. The, the Pacific Ocean has more land surface than the entire rest of the world. The entire rest of the world covers less space than this one. There's five great oceans. The Pacific Ocean is the greatest. The Pacific Ocean covers 59 million square miles. Huh? the largest ocean in the world. One third of the Earth's surface is covered by this one ocean. And that's just the top. That's just the top. And its most, at greatest depth is seven miles deep. Now Jesus is like that. He covers more territory than you than you dare to imagine. Yeah, uh -huh. And he's deeper than yeah. you dare to imagine. No matter how long you live, I've lived now 80 years, I'm still do discovering how vast yeah. Christ is and how deep. Yeah. See? It's like, so it's like the Lord put the ocean there. That's a, that incidentally, the Pacific Ocean in particular and five other, four other oceans, gigantic yeah. oceans, are the residual effects of the flood. Amen. <laughs> yes, the res residual, yeah. and it's still dropping down, evaporating. See yeah. this ice melting up yeah. in the top is, is probably the floods of the Noah's yeah, right. flood. The ice caused by that melting. Yeah. See, yeah, it's just now starting to get back to normal. Yes, sir. You know, this depth. There's there's some doctrines that are like this. There's some truth oh, yeah. that you'll never see until you get way down here with Christ. <laughs> Yeah, you get down there deeper, the water's richer and everything. Yes. While well, you're still drawing parallels between Christ, the, the truth, and the water, at seven miles <laughs> below the surface of the water, water pressure is intense oh, because yeah. of the weight of all that water <laughs> on top of you. Oh, yeah, kill you. So you've got to <laughs> have... Special equipment, if you're getting all the way down seven miles underneath, yeah. you've got to have high strength, pressure resistant equipment mm -hmm. if you're going to get down there. So it's restricting. Oh, the yeah. deeper you get, the more restriction you have. Oh, yeah. But it's exactly the opposite in Christ. Yeah. The deeper in Christ you get, the, li the more the limitations come off. That's right, more liberated it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, it, it's, pictured, it's pictured in nature. Yeah. That's, it's yeah. just excellent to see that. So Jesus, so this, uh, we often like, like this man, like the blind man who was healed, he says, Jesus said, do you believe on the Son of God? He says, who is he? Who is he that I can believe on him? You'll, there's a sense in which during your life you'll say the same thing. You'll sense, whoa, I'm just touching the, I'm just touching the hem of the garment. This is like the iceberg above ground. T tell me more. Mm. Yeah. You'll have this hunger and thirst to know more about Christ. See, you can reach the bottom of other bodies of knowledge pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty quickly you can reach, reach as far as they go. But this isn't so with Christ. And there's a God-made man yeah. so that by nature he's not content with shallowness. Yeah. Amen. You have to be deceived mm -hmm. to be content with shallowness. Yeah. 
Now it says that he, uh, Jesus had conveyed himself away. Is what the King James Version says. He conveyed himself away. The New King James says he had withdrawn. He slipped away, New American Standard. He disappeared. Jesus left the area in which he had just worked. That had drawn attention, he, he left. Mm -hmm. He left that area. And there's several texts where he did this. He'd be a, it looked like a thriving thing going on, and he'd just pick up and go. Didn't stay there at all. Interesting. More, more than often, the casual disciple will look up, and Jesus is gone. Oh, yeah, I can't begin to tell you the people I've known personally who fiddled around in shallow water, dabbled around in shallow religion. Then when they finally looked up, <laughs> Jesus was gone. He wasn't there anymore. So it teaches you, you've got to be alert Amen. when you're around Jesus. Now, the, the text tells us why Jesus left. And we dedicate this to, you know, people that, are enamored with mega churches. We, yeah. we dedicate this to them. It was because there was a multitude in that place. Mm -hmm. That's why he left. Mm -hmm. There's too many people. Yeah. <laughs> See, it doesn't make sense to, to a 20th century American. It doesn't make sense. There's too many people. Yeah. They say, make room for the rest of the people. You know, that's what they say. That, that's uh, not the way Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus thought. At least two times in Scripture, when there's a multitude of people, Jesus saw the multitudes, and he went up into a mountain. Uh -huh. yeah. Departed, went up into a mountain. Another time, Jesus saw great multitudes about him, and he gave a commandment to his disciples, let's go to the other side. Uh -huh. <laughs> Another time, he sent the multitudes away, Matthew 14. Another time, when the multitudes gathered about him, he withdrew himself in the wilderness and prayed. Another time when great multitudes were found with him, he turned and said unto them, and then he declared to them what it meant, what it was required for them to be a, a disciple, to follow him. Mm -hmm. It was eliminated a whole yeah. lot of people. Yeah. The point is that Jesus is not like the great men of the world. Yeah. The great men of the world will do anything to get a lot of people following them and looking at them. Not, not Jesus. He was merciful with them when they were hungry. As soon as he fed them, though, he sent them away. Both cases. As soon as he fed them, he sent them away. Yeah. The point here is that Jesus is generally not found in the crowd. Mm -hmm. If he is there, people don't know it. All of Jesus' substantive teaching was delivered to his disciples. He never preached anything substantive to the multitudes. Now, if you're a Bible student, you know this. If you're not, you just have to examine to see if this is true. Mm -hmm. He just talked on the surface to the multitudes. Right. Never told them anything of any real substance. And afterward, he'd explain it to his disciples. It's written in Mark 4.34, Without a parable spake he not unto them, the people. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. This is Jesus... <laughs> This is just Jesus' man. Now, you can get lost in a multitude yeah. and get away from Jesus in a multitude. There's a, something about Jesus that a multitude neutralizes yeah. the effect of Christ. Yeah. You say, what about the day of Pentecost? 3,000 believers. Listen, there were millions of people in Jerusalem, 3,000, a very small percentage of the people that believed. And they had come to inquire, find out about what was there. But Jerusalem was filled with people. They estimate five to seven million people were there at the, at the Passover feast. So just see, Jesus, he can get lost in the multitudes. And if a person really wants Jesus in the inner multitude, they have to, like, come to the front. Yeah, uh -huh. You'll notice that, like this man that wanted his son mm -hmm. healed, they have to come to the front right. and be bold and seek the Lord out. Now, this isn't to say we're, we're against multitudes. Right. Don't anyone think that. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is that that's not the key. That's yeah. not the key. Yeah, Brother Given, then that's just for, for now. That's just for the time. We know we're going to a place where there's a multitude, but no man oh, yeah. can number. So, but but our, it's, it's our frame. It's, it's our constitution right now. 
that that would they would have at one part at one time they would take had taken him and made him a king. Yeah. But see, this isn't why he came. That's right. He see, didn't come for that. In this world, until God works a work that the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea, believers are the exception. Yeah. They're not the rule. Mm -hmm. Never have been. Yeah. Never have been the rule. Even in Jerusalem, with all the thousands of people that believed, they were still a minority. Mm -hmm. they, were st they were still a minority. Now afterward, the sect says afterward, later or at another time. Now this is the language of divine purpose. Keep in mind. Jesus is only doing what the Father gave him to do. He's, he's operating on a strict agenda. And this is the next thing that happens. Jesus goes to the temple. And wouldn't you know it, this man was in the temple. <coughs> That's where he was. He knew where to go. He knew where to go. He was in the temple. Now, a word about the temple. This wasn't the temple proper where the holy place and holiest place where this is not the temple we're talking about that was situated in a temple complex and I have a artist drawing of the temple complex this was Herod's temple it was a tremendous structure mind-boggling how large it was Jesus called it my father's house there were all kind of courts and open areas in this where people gathered and this man was somewhere in one of those groups. He was, when he says, was in the temple, Jesus taught in the temple. He wasn't teaching in the holy place yeah, yeah. or the holiest place beyond the veils. He was teaching in the temple, what we would call the temple complex. That man was healed by one of the gates. Remember, he's at one of the gates. And he healed, and then he went in, and he was found leaping and praising God in the temple. It was in a temple, like court or, or yard. That's where he was. So this is where... Uh, Jesus found him in the temple. Jesus, when he was 12, he was found in the temple. There was some area where the doctors of the law were mm -hmm. teaching and so forth, and Jesus, young Jesus found his way to there, found his way there, and was at that place. Now, remember, this man didn't know who healed him. John does not say Jesus told him either. Interested in it. <laughs> he told a blind man who he was. A blind, he said, do you believe in the Son of God? He said, who is he? He said, I, he that speaks to you, I, I'm him. And he believed and worshipped him, it says. So here's what he said to the man. He found the man. He said, behold, behold, uh, behold. Thou art whole. Check yourself out now. See that you're, you're whole. You're. Mm -hmm. See, after you've been laying on a pallet for 38 years, maybe you wonder if every part was whole. Right? Look, behold, now check it out. Yeah. See if you're not whole. Every whit whole. See if it's thorough. Consider how long you were there, helpless. Mm -hmm. Think about these things. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus said to the gathering demoniac after he healed him, he said, "I go and go home to your friends." Mm -hmm. He had some friends. I wonder if people. He had some friends, which meant he must not always have been that. He must not always been a demoniac, a raving madman. Go home and tell your friends what great things I've done for you. See, those who have been blessed by the Lord should, should examine themselves and have a, a lucid idea of what God's done to them. Amen. Because that's what you want to tell. You want to tell what's happened to you in Christ Jesus. You shouldn't conclude everybody will know by looking at you. You don't know. They, uh -huh. yeah. they won't. If you live for Jesus, everybody will know. No, they won't. Uh -huh. See? That's right. This is the purpose. about this earlier when you were speaking about the works of God to be believed and not uh, assessed. I was considering this very point that we are to examine them in order to become familiar with yeah. what he did in yeah, them. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so we want it's like we want to seek out the truth that he's invested in that work yes, or right. in that word. Mm -hmm. So that we can be uh, profited, we yeah. can be benefited by it. Yeah, the work is like an index. God's works are like an index to what he who he is and what he does. Then he says to them. This is Jesus now. 
sin no more. Other versions say, do not sin anymore. You know, he says, stop sinning. This is Jesus. Now, this is Jesus yeah, talking. Yeah. To someone he healed. Mm -hmm. Now, stop sinning. It is not as though Jesus said something that was impossible to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> It is that he said, sin not. So, well, who, like, who could do, who, how can this be? Uh -huh. This is Jesus saying this. Amen. He said this same, he said this same thing to the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Uh -huh. yeah. He said, where are your accusers? And we don't have any. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Yeah. No more. Mm -hmm. It's caused an end to that. Mm. Now, if a person is sensitive enough, when you were baptized into Christ, if you're sensitive enough, Jesus said this to you. Yeah, amen. Sin no more now. Yeah. Don't, don't sin anymore. Uh -huh. See? And every time you confess your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive yeah. you your sins, like John said, uh -huh. every time if you listen, you'll hear this voice. Don't sin anymore now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stop sinning. Uh -huh. Does that seem like it's too challenging? Mm -hmm. For some people it does. It seems too challenging. But you remember that... Uh, John said, I write these things unto you that you sin not. So I'm yeah. going to tell you some things that will help you. Yeah, amen. If you know these things, it will help you not to sin. Like we have an advocate with the Father, yeah. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. That won't make you say, at last I've got an excuse for sin. That will make you not want to sin if you have an advocate with the Father. Amen. See, an advocate, you don't want the only thing he does to keep you from being condemned. I mean, you, <laughs> you want something further than that. Yes. Advocate does more than... Make sure you're not condemned. Stop sinning. Go and sin no more. Yes. Seems like this is a this is a spiritual parallel command to take up your bed and walk. That's right. Mm -hmm. Take up your bed and walk. That's with right. The physical. I'm healing you of your physical disability uh -huh. right here. Yeah. Take up your bed and walk. Yeah. yeah. The man recognized this man had power. Uh -huh. I'm going to do what he says. Yeah. Now Jesus finds him again <laughs> and gives him a parallel command for his spiritual, uh -huh. for right. his spiritual well-being. Yeah. Now sin no more. Sin no more. Mm -hmm. I, I can give you power to heal you another way. Yeah, that's right. Sin no more. And then he goes on to say that we're going to see you can fall back, lest the worst thing come upon you. That's right. Uh -huh. Sin no more. Sin not. Hmm. Stop sinning. Yeah. Two times the apostles tell us, sin not. Again, it's written in Romans 6, 12, let not sin reign in your mortal body. Mm -hmm. Don't let it. You've got, see, for sin to erupt, you have to let it. Amen. That's right. Allow it. Yeah. Permit it. Oh. Don't do it. Which means you've got some resources that enable you to do that. Amen. The grace of God will teach you to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you mm -hmm. to do this. Jesus is interceding for you. He's interceding for you so that he, the Holy Spirit's working with you, interceding for you to, on earth. Mm -hmm. See, Angels are out there to minister to you. There's all kind of pluses yeah. that belong to the people of God. Mm. Sin not. And then he makes this statement, which has, <laughs> has caused some people a lot of trouble, but this is what he said lest the worst thing come upon thee. Yeah. That leads me to suspect that this condition he had was the result of some kind of iniquity. Yeah. Yeah. Under the law, God revealed what he is like. Yeah. This is found in Leviticus 26, 23, and 24. Mm -hmm. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things but will walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Yeah. This is God, see, yeah. God, now God doesn't change. We all know that, don't we? Amen. God doesn't change. This is still God's attitude towards sin. This is why he gave us a Savior. Yeah. This is why he gave us the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. This is why he gives us faith that comes, that we can stand by faith. This is why, because this is the way God is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So his salvation... Uh -huh provides for you walking with this kind of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
I remember that uh, Jesus talked about a man that had his house swept clean. That's right. And yeah. the devil came back because he had no place. And he went back to his uh, former home and was uh. swept clean, but nothing was in there. Uh, yeah. And he brought in seven more devils, seven even more. more worse That's right. than yeah. he was. But in Christ, we're still um, encouraged conscience. He's sweeping everything. He's given us a new slate to write his laws down. Yes, right. uh -huh. yeah, that's right. That's right. This lets the worst thing come upon you. Yeah. I've given I've given you everything you need for life and darkness. Yeah. You reckon on that uh -huh. instead of your sin. See, so, so Christ's atoning death didn't change God. That's right. It changes us. Yes. All right, you're right. Absolutely right. And the last state he said was worse. Worse than the first. Now at the Lord, the Corinthians at the Lord's table, they were not conducting themselves acceptably at the Lord's table. Now what I'm going to tell you may very well account for the many multitudes of sick lists that's on the back of bulletins. This may account for it. But let God be the judge. But because they had conducted themselves in an unacceptable manner at the Lord's table, for this cause many among you are sick yeah. and some died. That's right. See? Sin no more. Let's see that? <laughs> That's the worst thing. Maybe somebody died at the Lord's table. I don't know, but that's a, that's a text you really want to pay a lot of attention yeah, to. Right. Shows how God is. And Peter... Uh, Peter spoke of a condition that was worse, so, so bad that it had been better if they hadn't been saved at all. They'd have been better off if they were never saved at all. Yeah. It's in 2 Peter 2.20. And Jesus uh, spoke of a person that the, wor the latter state was worse than the first. Now, the, uh, the number of professing Christians that return to their own ways is, is uh, mind-boggling. how much backsliding is going on. It's a, it's a reality that causes much heartbreak. For my, I just speak for myself, mm -hmm. to see people stepping backward. Yeah. And you'll see it. If, you, if you're serious about the Lord, you'll see it. And pretty soon, you'll find out that unless God empowers you, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Mm -hmm. right. That's how potent, see, that's how potent sin is. Yeah. When a person is caught in the in the tug of people back into sin, what's washed up on the shore, you know, the shore will pull you out. The yeah. tide will pull you back out mm -hmm. into that depths. Yeah. And uh, sin does that. It sucks people back out. And they, they don't think about this saying, don't sin anymore lest a worse thing come upon you. Mm -hmm. Because the second time God judges is worse than the first. Yes, amen. Just as God's ex blessings are exponential, uh -huh. so his curses are that way too. Amen. That's the way God is. God yes. can't do anything that's sta what we call static. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not at all. So here's some people, here's how they reason. They say, well, if they fell away, they weren't saved in the first place. Yeah. See, maybe you've heard people say that. They fell away, they weren't saved in the first place. But that's just thoughtless jabber. That's all that is. Yeah. That doesn't mean they weren't never sa they were never saved. That just means they went back yeah, right. like a dog to its vomit and sow to its well in the mire. Yeah. They went back, yeah. which tells you you've got to get far from Satan. Amen for him not to exercise effective influence against you. Yeah. The closer you are to Satan and the closer you are to the world, the more success Satan and the world will yeah. have with you. Right. Pretty you. soon you'll have you doing things you, you th thought you'd never do again. Yeah. There you are, you're doing them again because you were just too close, see? Yeah. So this is all settled by this say, sin no more. Yeah. And when you don't say, can I? This seems like it's too hard. Take it seriously. Sin no more. Amen. Uh -huh. And then Jesus will come along your side. Amen. He'll come by, the, by your side. Yeah. And he'll strengthen you uh -huh. to carry that out. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Amen. He will. He'll strengthen you to carry that out. Amen. 
and things that maybe you were accustomed to doing all your life, you'll be able to just like stop them. Yes. Abruptly stop it. Yeah. Not because of your discipline, but because with your faith and determination yeah. comes Christ and the Spirit and a whole host of other, Amen. other advantages. So, Amen. when you're really healed, whether it's uh, of an infirmity or of the effects of sin, that healing brings with it the ability to maintain that healed status. Amen. That's right. See? Yes. It comes along with it. So I, I commend, that, uh, mm -hmm. commend that to you. Any of you have a word you'd like to add tonight? Yes, but uh, yes, sir. Preached loud loud and, and clear in this country mm -hmm. and all over the world now that that he he not only forgives the sin and heals you but he enables you to walk worthy of his right. calling. Yeah. Yeah. Now this can be said to a man before Christ died, before he rose from the dead and gave us the Holy Spirit. How much more now? That's right. Yeah. That we've been empowered from on That's high. Right. Yeah. See why it's important it's, it's, it's important not to, once a person's converted, it's important that we don't stop Amen. teaching that yeah. person. That's that's the fad now. The fad is once you're in, yeah. just, you're pretty soon you, everything's right. tailored for the people that aren't in. But that's why it's not that way in the kingdom of God, because Amen. there are forces that remain, you remain amidst hostile and powerful forces yes. against which you've got to grapple. You've got to have the strength to do it. And it begins with your resolve. I'm not going to sin. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. And then that resolve, God will strengthen your resolve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else tonight? All right. Who is it? Oh, yeah, Brother Jason. You know, John, excuse me. John's purpose in this gospel is that we might believe, believe that Jesus right. is the Son of God. Uh huh. Now, if you apply that, that's John's stated purpose for everything he wrote in this gospel. If you apply that to this uh, issue about Jesus and the Sabbath, yeah. see, the underlying issue here is who is Jesus? Yeah. That's right. Now, uh -huh. if, if Jesus is not the Son of God, hmm. there might be reason to think that he disobeyed the law of God. Uh huh. Uh huh. But, uh, but see, on the other hand, yeah. if we're taught, if Jesus is the Son of God, yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. He's not going to break the law, and He's certainly not going to yeah. encourage someone <laughs> yeah. else to break the law. So the the underlying issue there is that is who is Jesus? Amen. He's the Son yes. of God. Now, an application of that is is that if you're obeying Jesus, you're going to be in agreement with God. Yes. Amen. You're, amen. you're actually going to, you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're obeying <laughs> Jesus, the law is going to be fulfilled in yeah. you. Amen. Amen. Which That's is right. what Paul says in Romans 8, except Paul was talking about the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. which is yeah. actually how we follow Jesus. That's today. right. Amen. We, 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 Give ourselves to the leading of the Spirit, uh -huh. and that's we're and then we're obedient to the Spirit. We're mm -hmm. obedient to Christ, Amen. and the law is fulfilled in us. Amen. Yes. So Amen. it's not it's not like the Scripture saying go ahead and like break, go ahead and just ignore the law that's or right. just uh -huh. break the law. You actually will keep the Sabbath. Amen. If yeah. You, the true the true Sabbath. That's right. Yeah. You'll and keep it. Uh, you'll Amen. keep it if you follow <laughs> Jesus and Amen. the rest of it too. That's right. Amen. 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 Uh, when Jesus says, sin no more, I think of when, when it says, you are a new creation, or made new when we come into Christ. What, mm -hmm. Whatsoever is born of God doth not sin. That's right. Yeah. So there is a part of you that will not sin, that does not even have the capability to sin, mm -hmm. as opposed to being withheld from it. Yes. So what Jesus is saying is, don't let that old part of you off of the cross and let it have dominion because yeah. when that happens that's when you sin yeah. when the new when the new creature is on the throne you'll do exactly what jesus yes. exhorted him to do commanded him yeah. to do yeah. sin no more when that's yeah. when that's on the throne when that's preeminent when christ is preeminent and that new creature is given dominion of mm -hmm. yourself then that's exactly what will happen yeah. yes. sin no more mm -hmm. yes. amen Yes. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust. That's right. I, I, 
we've been made new. We're, we're, we're a new creation. We, we're the ones that have changed. God yeah, has changed. That's right. Yeah. Remember in Malachi it says, I am the Lord, I change not. He says, change. therefore, uh -huh. you sons of Jacob are consumed. consumed. Yeah. So actually if God changed, oh, we wouldn't yeah. be here right now. Yeah, that's he right. would have just—he would have already okay. wiped us all out. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of the Sabbath and keeping. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, "The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath." Lord of the yeah. Sabbath. That's right. So if we're submitted to His Lordship. We're not going to violate the Sabbath. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said. Of course, in Hebrews, he develops that that the Jews kept the Sabbath, but they never entered into rest. That's right. It remains a rest to the people yeah. of God. We're yeah. cease from your own works. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yes. And he didn't come to abolish the law and the prophets. But That's the right. Uh -huh. And this was part of the fulfillment. That's right. He's moving toward a true rest. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the Ten Commandments, I think I've said this to you frequently, but the Ten Commandments become ten promises when yes. you're in Christ. Because uh -huh. yeah. yes. you're in agreement with them, see? Yeah. Did not let the worst thing come upon me. That shows to me like a good act, a good reason for why we meet together as often as we do. Uh -huh. Because we want to stay strong, we want to learn, we want yeah. to keep ourselves yeah. in good standing with God. And I see that when people do teach this, well, what we call once saved, always saved, with that comes an assumption that people are safe. And I think that has contributed significantly to the soul winning campaign mm -hmm. because. You, well, you've been in churches where it's about saving souls, saving souls. The people in the church are neglected, but I think there's that assumption mm -hmm. that they're safe. But that's we need this. Yeah. We need this sin, not lest the worst thing come. And yeah. so that we 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 play a part in helping each other in this area when we gather together and we strengthen each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, Sister Barb. <clears throat> 